In this video, we'll explore a rather important question for those starting this course. Why JavaScript and the Internet of Things? There are plenty of technologies and programming language that the Internet of Things can work with. We've got Arduinos running C code, Microsoft technology running .NET, Raspberry Pis running Python, C, C++, Java, Scratch, and Ruby. The All Join project from the Olsen Alliance works on C++, but also has access to Java and JavaScript too. JavaScript is just one of many options for the Internet of Things, and to be fair, a lot of the other options are great too, but there are advantages to using JavaScript, and I'll go over those in this video. The first benefit is that much of the internet already speaks JavaScript. We're looking at expanding the internet to include new things, and a huge portion of the web's functionality is already enabled via JavaScript. Connecting up the web to our IoT devices using a language that web pages and web apps already speak has the potential to make things simpler to manage. Applications which listen for events and respond when events occur are a strength of JavaScript. Both Node.js and Socket.io have great systems for dealing with requests and events. Socket.io allows us to define events, broadcast when an event happens on our Socket.io server, and then have each device respond if the device is watching for that event. Node has the event loop, which runs a number of tasks without needing to wait for each one to finish. It can run the task, then go off and run something else, only needing to deal with the results of the tasks when they complete. This works very well for the Internet of Things, when a server is likely going to have a bunch of different tasks to respond to, and various devices, which may take varying times to respond to requests for data, rather than worrying and waiting for each device to respond before trying another or continuing on another task, we can juggle multiple tasks and keep things flowing. Another advantage is that we can share functionality. If your server understands JavaScript, your web app understands JavaScript, and your IoT devices understand JavaScript, then they can share common functionality really easily. For example, if you've got common business logic that you need to reuse on various devices, you can reuse the same functions really easily. Not only is sharing functionality easier, but sharing data can also be much easier when all devices speak JavaScript. Every language has its own idiosyncrasies that you've got to deal with when you work with them. When you work between devices, you've got to convert data between each and back again. It's definitely possible to do it. I mean, it's done every day by many devices and servers around the world. But wouldn't it be nice if you could just work with all devices understanding data the same way? JSON is an incredible blessing in the age of the Internet of Things. It makes things a lot easier to manage and deal with. Another advantage is that there are so many existing libraries, plugins, and APIs for JavaScript that have been developed over the years for client-side and Node.js work that can be used for entirely new purposes in the IoT world. There are great JavaScript libraries and modules like underscore JS, Lodash, Traverse, Async, and Socket.io, which can help build some really great solutions with much less effort needed than if you were building a solution from scratch. Even better is the fact that, as mentioned before, you can use the same libraries across your server, web app, and devices. Another big reason I like to encourage new developers to give it a go is that I found it's a bit easier for new developers to understand and get running quickly. Like many of my points, though, there will be people out there who disagree with me on this. JavaScript has matured though. It's come a long way since the early days of it being used for pop-up alert boxes and mouse over effects. Whilst it has come from humble and slightly messy beginnings, there are now modern JavaScript practices allowing you to build maintainable, scalable, and testable applications. It is already in strong use in enterprise with companies like eBay using node-based systems with huge success. JavaScript is open. There's no massive corporation that's guarding the JavaScript language and requiring yearly fees or specific software, operating systems, or IDEs to develop with it. You can develop in JavaScript on any computer you currently own. It's open to all. Build and run things with just a notepad editor or a free web editor. It's an open standard, and I really do hope that it encourages an open standard for IoT devices to communicate between each other too. Not only that, but it's already flourishing. We've already got IoT devices out there that can work with JavaScript. Thus, this course can exist. We can work with Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, SparkCore, Tessel, Esperuino, Intel's Galileo boards, the Leap Motion, Nest Thermostat, the Pebble Watch, the Mayo Armband, and even things like Google Cardboard and the Oculus Rift. Though the Oculus doesn't have official support, there are third party options. So, whilst JavaScript might not be the only solution for the Internet of Things, and it's definitely not always the best solution in all cases, there are big reasons for using it in many situations and a ton of advantages to developing in JavaScript. For those looking to get a good start in the IoT world, JavaScript is a great option, and this course should be able to whet your appetite and get you started. 